Mentality Podcast, and I have my co-host, Darius. What's up? And I got an intro. Yes, you got an intro this time. Today we have our most special guest that we've ever had on this podcast. Sorry, everybody else. But we have Katie Zellum. Hello. Let's welcome her to the Pro Mentality. Hello, everyone. Can't wait to be here. I get this question a lot, and everyone's routine is, is different. Can you take us through it, you know, a day in the life? Of Katie Zellum. Like, what is your day to day? People think that we just go to training and that's the end of it. What makes you the complete footballer? Yeah, there's definitely a lot more to it than that. Yeah. <laughs> Some days, like, every, like my mom laughs at me because I'm like, Mom, I went in today and I finished up like in at nine and finished up four. And she's like, I do that every day, Katie. Like, <laughs> but you don't run around the field and lift weights in the gym. That's different. Like, you're sat at an office. Um, but people do <laughs> think like, we go in for an hour or two and we come home. But for example, like my day today, um, went in at nine. We have breakfast, then we do analysis. So that involves like looking over the team we're about to play. So for example, this weekend we're playing Aston Villa. We'll watch clips of Aston Villa, like study how they play, study their strengths, study their weaknesses that we can exploit. Um, we'll then go into the gym and do like pre like pre training gym so like activation to get ourselves ready go out onto the pitch for around an hour and a half two hours um come back in shower change have lunch and then if we've got an afternoon session we'll do gym uh for an hour or so and then by the time that's finished it's maybe half three four o'clock um so that's pretty much your whole day. And everyone always says to me, what do you do when you get home? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> You're exhausted. Yeah. I sit down for an hour and do nothing. <laughs> All my cousins are boys. <laughs> um, <laughs> either or. Um, so it was a bit like play football with them or sit inside on your own. And like, mm-hmm. I quickly learned I didn't really have much of a choice. So at six, I signed for my first boys team. Oh, you signed for a boy. What was the name of that boys team? It was called Fails with Dynamos. And it's actually really close to my house. And like, I always try and nip back every so often. Like, they have no idea who I am. They're like six years <laughs> <laughs> But I'm just like, guys, I used to be here. <laughs> I think I think that's really special because like, I grew up playing with boys on a boys team, co-ed. And how has that impacted you as a, as a player? I've you know, when I talk to the youth a lot, I said, go out there, play with the boys. I think it's really molded me in the type of aggressive player that I am. So how about you? How has it impacted you? Yeah, I totally agree. Like, not just me as a player, but probably me as a person as well. Like, you've got to build quite a strong resilience when you're playing with the lads. Like, I'll always remember, like, I'll be lined up ready to start at like six or seven years old and the other team would be shouting like, ha, ah, they've got a girl on the team. <laughs> And, and then you're like, just watch. <laughs> yeah, and my teammates at the time are like some of my friends and still still some friends now. They were like, yeah, we have got a girl and she's better than you. <laughs> I mean, have you always wanted to be a professional footballer? I mean, growing up in a family like that? Um, I think when I was quite young, like I didn't really know playing professionally was a possibility. Like when I was playing with the boys, I, like, I never imagined that, oh, I can play professional and that can be my full-time job. Like, I always knew I wanted to play football, but I think it was when I got a little bit older and signed at United, I was like, oh, this is what I want to do and this is my dream. Growing up as a footballer over there is so different than growing up as a footballer in America. Um, what's kind of the path? Let's say a lot of the gr- a lot of the girls that are watching, the players that are watching um, that want to play in England or overseas, what is the path like for you as a player there? Um, I think now there's so much more opportunity, like even with the likes of Manchester United, um, like developing a women's team, like there's so much more opportunity now. And our league at the minute has like a huge percentage of foreign and overseas players. Um, and I think a lot of teams are interested in, uh, we've obviously signed Tobin and Kristen and 
there's a lot of girls that have played in America that have been over. Like one of my teammates, Alessia Russo, um, went to North Carolina University and she signed for us this season. So there is definitely opportunity to come over and play in England. And for me, it's one of the most competitive leagues in Europe. The, it's the first fully professional league. So every single team is professional and has to fulfil a requirements to be able to be in the league so it just means the standards getting better and better like Mm -hmm. Alessia is a perfect example although she's English like she went away for four years um completed college and then Man United like snapped her up in an instant and there's not just Alessia like uh uh, Charlotte Lotta was over there at the same university and Another girl called Lois um, has come back and signed for West Ham. So it's important to know also, like, in England, Man United, Man City aren't just the big clubs. Like, there's a lot of clubs over here with huge potential and most clubs are linked with their men's Premier League partings, like West Ham, um, clubs like that, and Brighton. They're all at unbelievable facilities and there's not just four teams to pick from. Like, there's 12 teams in the league and they're all playing to a unbelievable standard with great facilities and obviously all that full time as well Um, and going off of that I mean you played for Liverpool you played for Juventus how special it is for you because you grew up watching Man United that Man United got a team how special is that for you yeah it's like a dream come true for me when I was 17 like that we had an unbelievable team like looking back some of the girls are back at United with me now other girls have been gone to City Everton like They've all had to, we all had to disperse, like each age group just was losing girls and girls because they didn't have a women's team. So they had to go and find new clubs and reroute themselves somewhere else. Um, and United have done a great job of being able to bring some of the old players back, which I think makes it that even bit more special. And um, that some of my teammates now are who I played with when I was 14. Um, and like, awesome. not only, yeah, not only me and like, Millie are best friends, but like our parents are. Our parents mm-hmm. have known each other for like from the 10 same years. village. Like you guys from like literally everyone like lives in Manchester. Or? Like Manchester <laughs> for us is like a minuscule of LA. So I we <laughs> got to each other's house in like half an hour. Oh really? <laughs> Where you are. So like our parents, like my dad, Millie's dad, another girl that used to play for United, Ella's dad. Like they all stay over at away trips together in hotels. Wow, that's awesome! It's like a little dads and lads club. Um, go to all the games together, so they've got like their little bond, and we've got ours. Like it's so nice to see. For me, I was lucky enough to actually play alongside one of my footballing idols, um, which is probably a really rare occasion. Farrah Williams is an unbelievable, unbelievable player, and I signed at Liverpool and was fortunate enough to be able to train with her every day and see what she brings but it's such a rare occasion that that ever happens and I think why not give that to everybody why not why not give everybody the opportunity to be able to speak to someone they look up to and not just have general conversation but actually learn things gain knowledge and listen to the experiences that they've been through system and now getting your first senior you know your senior call up you know the olympics are on the horizon how does that feel yeah, to be honest, it was like, come as a bit of a shock. Um, I literally, like you said, went through every possible youth age group. And at one point, I was the most, most capped youth player. Um, so, for, like, I didn't actually know that. So, someone asked me the question. I was like, well, I don't know, like, someone else? And they're like, Kate eats you. I was like, oh. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> um, so that was like like great to know like hear that and know that but then to be rewarded with my like a senior call up and I'm probably most people are probably aware it didn't go to plan the very first one I tested positive for COVID so that wasn't as I probably imagined (laughs) Um, but thankfully uh, Phil gave me another chance and I got called up to the next one and for me to be around some of the best players in England again was like an amazing learning experience like some of the girls I've known for years and some I didn't know too well, but just to be in and around the environment of people who want to win and people who want to do your country proud just takes you the next level up. And for me, that's something I hope continues. Um, I know that it's still early days for me and 
with the managerial changes, it's obviously a little bit more difficult, but mm-hmm. there's a new manager coming in in September and that's definitely my aim going forward. With the Olympics coming up, most people don't realize um, for England that you guys are comprised of Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and England, and you guys are Team Great Britain. Um, <laughs> So it just makes the pool bigger and bigger and bigger. So the spots less and less and less. How is that moving forward into this Olympic year for you? Yeah, I mean, it makes it so difficult for us to get selected, like not just competing with the girls that play in England, but also with other three other nationalities. Um, unfortunately for me, the strongest area is probably the midfield. Um, Scotland, Wales and Ireland all have some unbelievable midfielders so that just makes it that little bit more difficult but for me I just need to keep doing what I'm doing the Olympics is obviously everybody's aspiration but I won't be too disappointed if it doesn't happen because I know it's quite soon um, maybe a little bit too soon but the Euros is definitely my aim my fake tango is everywhere especially away games um, <laughs> oh I love it this is another thing people laugh That's at. One. I, wear, I wear the same sports bra and knickers for every Me game. Me too! Me <laughs> too! This is Me TMI. I'm taking, I'm taking the headphones off. This yes. is TMI. I'll be back when this five is done, all right? <laughs> you, have day, you have game day. Under, it's a superstition thing. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I think we're going to have the same bag, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> um... I don't know if I can take this with me, but I always put my right shin pad in and then my left shin pad. I'm left to oh. right because I'm left this, footed. So this is too much. I'm, this is too much. It's just, this is too much. I love it. Two um, more, two more. So I want to take that superstition if that's possible. Oh, another thing I always do. Don't know if I can take this, but I would if I had to. I have cheesy beans on toast for every pre-match. I have pancakes. <laughs> but cheesy beans on toast mm, I'll have to try that one <laughs> you just like I'll tell you I'll like it but really quickly toast beans on the side because I don't like soggy bread then mozzarella cheese but grated sprinkled on top and it melts oh that sounds amazing it's great actually you're making me hungry that's breakfast <laughs> that's breakfast today <laughs> um and my fifth thing mm. even if it's just like a that one song that just gets you, just gets you going and like, yes, I'm ready to step onto the field. We always play the same song before we go out onto every game. <laughs> what song is that? <laughs> what song is that? Well, it's a real random song and I picked it. So it's Baby Gigs. Oh, Gigs. G- All right, Lauren, Gigs is a British. I'm like so out of like <laughs> the whole, me- I need to like really step my game up on the music side. So. <laughs> Yeah, so, now, so now you know Burner Boy and Gigs. Yeah, I know. We had Liam Fraser on the other day, and he he was saying something. I was like, Burner Boy. I was like, I bet you if I heard it, I would probably know. It, you know, <laughs> I am hip, guys. I am hip. <laughs> That's the number one sign of not being hip. <laughs> oh, say that. Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Oh shoot! I mean, guys. Okay, I'm not hip. So okay, I'm gonna baby Gigs. I'm gonna look this up, and it's, gonna, okay, it's about to be my. It's about around. to be my new. It's about to be my new one. Um, I know before we end, one more piece of advice to all up and coming soccer superstars. What would be your piece of advice to them? My piece of advice would be to always believe in yourself. Um, sometimes people doubt you and sometimes maybe you think other people don't believe in you. But if you always believe in yourself, then that's one more person on your side. Um, for me, you can whatever actions you choose to take, people will always criticize either way. So as long as you stay true to yourself and you know you're doing the right things with the right intentions, then it will take you very far. Well, thank you guys for joining in and tuning in to the Pro Mentality. We will be back next week. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Darius. And we'll talk to you guys and see you soon. Bye, guys.